Baruch here with GenConnect.com, and we are joined today by the one and only Eli Brode. How are you, Mr. Brode? I'm good. Good to be with you. Thank you for being here. You just wrote a book, The Art of Being Unreasonable Lessons in Unconventional Thinking. What have you done to approach your life so far in an unconventional way? I'll tell you how that came about. After I was married one or two years, my wife gave me a plaque. It has a saying by George Bernard Shaw that said, the conventional man adapts himself to the world. Therefore, the conventional, unconventional person doesn't. Therefore, all progress comes from unconventional people. And, and so you would attribute your success, your tremendous success, to thinking unconventionally. And always asking why not, not following just conventional wisdom. Has that been, would you say, your ethos in becoming a self-made leader? Well, it's part of it. It's part of it. I'd always ask, why can't we do this? It hasn't been done before. Uh, you know, you never get the right answer. I kept saying, why not, why not, why not? And if I didn't get the, a real answer, I'd go ahead and do it. Well, of course, when you push against the grain and you're not conventional, there are times when things won't go so smoothly. That's how, did, true. how did you get through those moments? Well, you have to have perseverance. You have to have strength. You have to have leadership ability. You have to convince others you're doing the right thing. How would you define success? I define success. There are many def definitions of success. To me, success is doing something that makes a difference. Other people define success financially and otherwise, and I've been fortunate that way also. But I, I, I define success by doing something that makes a difference, that helps others. There are so many young men and women right now who look up to you as really the epitome of how one can create a career, create an incredible life in the United States. What's your word of inspiration for them? You know, so many young people right now can't get jobs. They can't create those careers. Well, I'm not sure I have any simple answer for that. I think there's great opportunity especially in all the, the fields uh, that are high-tech. When, when I started my career uh, in 1954, life was different. I started the home building industry, then went into financial services. Uh, high-tech was not, uh, there weren't great opportunities then. So th there are great opportunities today, more so than ever. So you believe that there is hope, that there is possibility oh, for the next generation? absolutely. You decided to participate in the pledge that was initiated by Mr. Buffett and Mr. Gates to give at least half of your fortune to charity. That's true, during a lifetime. Right. What, what was that decision process like? Well, we were doing it anyway. And when David Rockefeller, Warren Buffett, and Bill Gates came up with the giving pledge, we signed up immediately. In fact, we said we'll give 75%, 75%. of our net worth during our lifetime to, uh, to good causes, including, as you know, the Broad Institute partners with Harvard and MIT, three stem cell centers at California universities, to the arts, education reform in America, and we feel good about all that. You mentioned the arts, and you have become such an incredible force in the art world. What about the arts speaks to you? Well, to me, it's been a great education. And I, th I say life would be boring if I had spent all my time with other business people, bankers, lawyers, and the like. So being with artists and people in the art world is not only inspirational, it, 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 it gets me to be more creative. Have you ever tried making some art yourself? No, I haven't. That's not. We're not going to see that down the road in original no, road. I don't, no, I don't think so. You have to know what you're not. Fair and enough. I, I am not an artist, but I'm one that appreciates great art. Were there some mentors along the way who really helped you take it to the next level? Well, there were different mentors. There were mentors in art. A man by the name of Taft Schreiber, one of the founders of MCA. Uh, I didn't get interested in art till I was about 40 years of age. And I met him. He had a great collection. He uh, explained uh, 
the great work she had introduced me to art dealers, artists, museum directors, uh, and he was quite helpful. In business, there were a number of people I learned from. And what has been the best piece of advice that you've ever received? Oh boy, lots of advice. Mm. One of the cliche, the harder you work, the luckier you get. Well, it's true, right? <laughs> it is true. Mr. Broad, thank you so much. Good to be with you. And to learn more about Mr. Eli Broad and all of his incredible <laughs> philanthropic endeavors, be sure to check out GenConnect.com.